Good afternoon. Uh, for our update today, we'll be talking about the two time periods since our last uh, press briefing on Saturday. Um, so for the first period, from Saturday to yesterday, we had 39 new cases uh, who tested positive in BC, bringing our total to 1,987. And then in the second period, from yesterday to uh, this morning, we had an additional 11 new cases, bringing our total to just under 2,000, 1,998. So the total since uh, Saturday, our last report, was 50 new cases here in British Columbia. Uh, that includes over the weekend two additional long term care facility outbreaks in the Fraser Health Region at Valha uh, Valhaven Manor and uh, Valhaven Home and MSA Manor. In both these cases, a single uh, person was identified with uh, COVID 19, and the um, outbreak response teams ha from Fraser Health have been involved in both facilities to assess and to manage the outbreaks in those cases. One additional outbreak has also been declared over from a long-term care home, that's Central City Lodge. So we have now 12 uh, long-term care facility outbreaks that are over. We uh, currently have 21 long-term care or assisted facility outbreaks and three outbreaks in uh, acute care units um, for a total of 389 people in those uh, units are in the, those facilities who have tested positive. As you are aware, we have a number of community outbreaks as well, and we've had some increases uh, with testing over the weekend uh, at the Superior Poultry uh, work site, where we now have 25 people who have tested positive, and there's an ongoing investigation and testing of uh, contacts and family contacts uh, of people from that. Um, uh, facility and additionally we are up to 34 people from uh, United Poultry who have tested positive. Uh, I reported on Saturday that we had done a lot of testing at the Mission Correction, a Federal Correctional Institution um, and we remain at 118 uh, cases identified at that institution including 106 inmates and 12 correctional staff. In addition, we've had 11 people uh, now in the province associated with uh, the outbreak at uh, the industrial um, complex at Curl Lake in Alberta. And I want to talk a, a little bit about, about that uh, some more. I had um, identified that this was an issue because we have close ties between BC and Alberta around these uh, movement of people for this essential uh, work. Um, many BC residents continue to travel back and forth for the work that they have uh, in both places, but in Alberta as well. And to date, while we have 11 positive cases, we know that there are several hundred people who are um, associated with that workplace in Curl Lake, and we know that they've got various degrees of information from their employer about the outbreak. So I mentioned this last week, or I. Um, d I made you aware last week that anybody who has been in the Curl Lake project um, since March 24th or is in close contact with a worker who is ill and who has concerns needs to immediately self-isolate and if you are ill to contact public health. We have been given a list of names um, and we are going through across the province to try and contact individuals who were associated with that. Um, it's been a challenging process as we don't all have contact information for everybody. So I want to make it very clear that we continue to have um, cases reported um, in BC and in other provinces in Canada and Alberta that have been associated with the facility in Curl Lake and we need people to be very aware of that and if you do have any symptoms at all to stay away from others and to contact us either by calling 811 or calling your health care provider or local public health. In terms of our, our case status, we now have 97 people who are in hospital in BC and of those 36 are in critical care or ICU. Over the last uh, two days, we've additionally had three more people who have died from COVID-19 here in British Columbia, bringing the total number of people who have died to 103. And as always, we send our condolences and our thoughts to the families and to the caregivers of these people. We now have 1,190 people who have fully recovered from COVID-19. 
So I think you can see from these numbers, um, despite the community outbreaks that we're seeing, it's clear evidence that our sustained efforts to follow public health measures are working here in BC. That safe physical distancing and self-isolation requirements have slowed the rate of transmission and we're now seeing a decrease in numbers. In addition, our increased surveillance testing has led us to uh, find people in our community who are positive for COVID-19, and the vast majority of them are linked to known outbreaks now, which is an important thing for us to understand so that we know um, where transmission is happening in our community. We are getting close to those places where we, those, uh, that time where we can start to open up. We need, however, to ensure that we have the public health teams that are able to quickly undertake that contact tracing, that connection and connecting people who are positive and others who have been exposed so that we can isolate and work with them to ensure they're able to, be, uh, to remain in isolation and not pass this on to the next generation, to break those chains of transmission. This is the work that we will need to do, the surveillance, the contact tracing, the testing, for the weeks and months to come. And it's what we need your help to continue. We cannot allow hotspots to flare up and to affect our communities. We have had a Made in BC approach to our pandemic, and our experience of the pandemic has been different um, as we have seen across the country and around the world. And our recent challenges um, here in BC around some of the other things that are unique sometimes or that we share with our, our, our neighbours is the challenge of things like spring flooding and the upcoming forest fire season. We are very aware of how we need to manage our response to this pandemic and ensure that we are able to meet the needs that we have in the province to respond to these natural disasters as well. It's not an easy undertaking. And for example, we, need, we know that people who are working on the floods, the people who have been evacuated in this past week because of flooding, have had challenges in maintaining um, their ability to stay apart from others. And we know firefighters will need to work close together to, um, to, for the upcoming forest fire season, if need be. Other parts of Canada, through this commitment though that we have made and the hard work of everybody here in BC, we're now making plans to ease restrictions with the understanding of what we might face in the, in the coming months. Other parts of Canada and neighbours in the US are doing the same thing. Plans are being developed here in British Columbia and have been for the past weeks, but we are taking the time to do them right and to meet the conditions that we have and we are experiencing here in BC. Nobody wants to see a resurgence, so we are watching very carefully our focus is to provide a consistent framework so that different sectors, sectors know where they need to operate within. And we've done that already for many of the essential businesses that have continued to operate during the past months. And an example just recently is the guidance for essential retail food and grocery stores that ensures things like physical distancing and proper hygiene in those settings. We've also um, had our example that we uh, put out last week around the industrial camp order and the mandatory infection control plans that we have in these areas. To ease restrictions, we need to know that businesses are looking after your teams as well. And this comes to light again when we look at uh, the outbreaks that we've had in the poultry um, producing um, industry. Simply put, protecting your employees protects your business and protects all of us. So how you do that is to ensure employees can safely do their jobs while at work, and we've given guidance about how to do that. And equally important is to ensure that people are not penalized by staying home when they are ill. That is going to be so critical for all of us in the coming months. I know many people are eager to get their businesses going, and I've heard from many of you and many different sectors and individual businesses wondering about approval of their plans. The mechanism for doing that in a coordinated provincial fashion is being formulated. So please wait a few more days and it, we will be sharing all the detailed information in the coming days, including where and who you should speak to about your plans. But we want to ensure that our efforts are maximized across the province. 
we have, um, we will have a Made in BC province-wide plan and it's built on the groundwork that we have done together and the commitment that all of us have made and all of our collective ongoing efforts. We need to continue to work together and to take care of each other and to remain as we have been, kind and calm and safe. Thank you.